Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. One of my favorite things to paint are skies. They're always different, always challenging, and there's always one available to paint. Let's paint. I start out with a very loose wash of ultramarine blue, and I'm using my squirrel hair brush because I want the texture to really show up on the cold press paper. The painting is about cold uh, color and texture, so cold press is a happy medium. I just move around the painting using mostly ultramarine blue to start. Dash in a little bit of Quinnette gold, but any details going to be added. That was some cobalt blue at the bottom portion. Um, the sky um, gradation is from ultramarine blue to cobalt blue. Um, but there's going to be bits of both in both areas. So definitely not divided. I love the ultramarine pink. It, it really is purple. Um, it's a terrific uh, dulling color so it's great for the sky which is the clouds are basically the same color as the sky because they're white reflections they're just a little bit grayed and all I need to do that grain is little touches of a red so dull red ultramarine pink and quin gold and that's it this is a very simple painting I think there's four or five colors I use in it so very simple nice blue sky cold pressed paper i'm just moving around and notice i'm leaving a lot of whites i'm going i know that i will go back in and soften some of the edges with a rag or scrub a little with my brush closer to the end but right now i'm just getting the color on the paper and i'm not worrying about anything i'm just letting my brush dance around the paper Sky sketches are fabulous to do to practice. Um, I always liked uh, Robert Wade's example of dividing a sheet of paper into four bits and painting four quick skies. It's really good practice. You learn a lot and there always is one. So it's one of my, definitely one of my favorite things to paint because there's so much variation and it's so easy to find a gorgeous sky. All you have to do is look up. <laughs> now, as you can tell, the sky is not pink. But remember, this is going to dull, dull down when it dries. And I'm also going to be adding ultramarine blue and quin gold and things to dull down the, the pinky color. So it's going to end up being a lovely shadow gray. The really neat feature of the sky is the glow at the cloud edges. This uh, is just gorgeous. I don't think you could do that glow in anything but watercolor. I'm still just using the paint that's there half the time because remember, usually. Um, as things get further away, further down the sky, it gets lighter, a little bit duller color. So using the paint that you ha already have and letting it flow down the page is the perfect treatment for this. Cobalt blue is a bright, lovely teal blue. And um, it does great uh gradations it does kind of a granulation in with with everything else so I'm dealing with a couple very granulating colors and that's planned I know what my paints are going to do and I'm going to I want them to make the interesting separations and texture in there now this actually is the first in a series of cloud paintings in blue skies or mostly blue skies, I thought it would be interesting to show you how they do on different types of paper. So here's the basic cold press paper to start. 
and I'll be adding hot press and rough press and maybe a couple other ones. Can you tell that this is an excuse to paint skies? Really like painting skies with big white fluffy clouds. Of course, sunsets or, you know, storm clouds. Um, this one is actually right before a storm. We get some gorgeous big fluffy clouds, but they're kind of gray and huge. Um, so summer storms. Now, as you can tell, as that dried, and I did this in three passes, I do the little page turn thing so you can see where it's dried in between the washes. Um, so three separate washes. And the color, these colors that I'm dealing with dry tremendously as, I mean, fade tremendously as they dry. They go down to half the value that they were before. So that's something to keep in mind because as you can see from the photo, it's very bright, but it's not the knock your eyes out bright that the purple clouds are. Um, just some wonderful glowing light, but you won't get the glowing light if you um, paint it exactly how you want from the start. As you can tell, once more, it's dulled down as it dried. So now I'm going to do these little hints of sky with the cobalt teal peeking through the far clouds where it gets a little bit greener in the distance. And I'm not always worrying about the edges because remember I am going to pull some, um, soften some edges out and pull some paint around. I just haven't gotten to that. So just let your brush move with the shapes of the objects that you're painting. That's very important. And that really is the most important part of painting. If you want to recognize what you're painting. So see the multiple layers of blue, how that's starting to have a real depth beyond it. And moving up into the sky, we're going to have a couple layers there. And you can do multiple colors or several layers of the same wash. And you wouldn't think that the same colors applied in many different layers. It would make much of a difference where you do it in one wash or a couple washes, but it just does make all the difference. The same amount of pigment does hit the paper, but how it's applied makes all the difference on whether you get that translucent glow. And since this painting's all about the translucent glow, I want that. I want to avoid using gouache if at all possible. It's not going to ruin the painting if I have to pull out an edge or two, but it's going to look better if most of the white in the painting is the white of the paper because I'm not dealing with an opaque white. I'm dealing with a fluffy cloud, you know, translucent white. So for that, I want the paper. And you can see how each cloud, it, it really does depend on what's around it. So you're painting the shadow of one and the highlight of the other at the same time. Bring out that negative painting. Now here's another technique I use a lot is I put it on way darker than I happen to want it. And then I'll blot it out and this works better with a uh, with a cloth than with a paper towel. But you see that has that fluffy cloud texture in there. And you really can't get that any other way. So there's some detail and lots of sharp highlights in there. Mm, 
And as you can tell, you can do a lot with a limited palette. I'm not purposefully limiting my palette, but for this particular painting, a thalo blue would be too harsh. There isn't green in it, really. And so, you know, I'm limited by the subject matter. Since I am a pretty realistic painter, I seldom paint colors that I don't see in the painting anywhere. That's not to say that there aren't green shadows on a face, but I usually see them. I just exaggerate. Quinn Gold is a great mixing color. It's, it's terrific for just dropping in something like that. Now notice I'm not going back and scrubbing at it. I may I hit it a couple times, I may blur it a little bit together, but then I'm out of there. If you need to soften it or merge it a little bit more later on, you can do that. The proper time to do that is the next wash. But this is the last wash of this painting, so... And since this is done in my studio, um, I just leave it for a couple minutes with a fan on it, come back. This painting took 40 minutes total, and of course I've edited it down for YouTube, and two drying breaks, so three washes. And just letting the colors flow together. Say so it's the same colors again and again. And these are all still very wet, so it's going to dry lighter. Trust me. You got a finger paint somewhere. That's a tricky color to use in the shadows because it will turn green. And I'm not looking for green. I am looking for the weird graininess of that color of the cobalt teal, but I don't want it green. So immediately then adding the ultramarine pink dulls it down. So all I have left now is to soften the edges a little bit. And I'm done. Just pull out a couple areas that are too harsh. Here's a good example of how much colors dull when they dry. So it makes a big difference and you need to take that into account as you're painting. But what a gorgeous blue sky. Fluffy clouds. There are more videos from my website, paintingwatercolor.com and a lot more information. Thanks for watching. Happy painting.